People are always asking me the question, what sector of society do you fit in? Whether they see me in a university lecturing as a professor or perhaps as a consultant or even as a pastor or maybe someone who's teaching on leadership in some parts of the world, the question's always put to me, where do you fit in best or what sector do you serve in? Let me introduce you to my world. Go with me for the next few minutes. You have to list in advance what are the needs of the organization, are we sure that these are needs? What is the job description? Again, listing it. And then on that job description is not just skills that are required, but the competencies. That is the personality, the, the, the way, the natural process of how someone works, their strengths and the strengths that that job would require, whether they're self-starter, self-motivated, task-oriented. And I would say those are the things I look for. The community reflects diversity. But the real question that I want to address is that, does a community have to be diverse in order to build a diverse church? And the answer is absolutely not. A year, two years, they don't understand. And so, a practicing accommodation versus tolerance. Let me ask the question now, we saw the video. In what way did that player, the one who is American, practice accommodation to the international player? My teammates have responded tremendously to Dr. Island. He's just got so much wisdom, um, he's got a unique sense of humor, but he's so humble. And it's neat to see a guy give his time with all the knowledge and all the years that he's been doing it, the tremendous ministry that he has outside of what he's done for our team. I know this is a question that everybody thinks about from time to time, or I hope every day at least. What is the key to happiness? Our next guest says anyone can learn the habits of happy people. Happiness is a choice. Absolutely. In fact, uh, lots of people, in fact, 20% of Americans, according to the American Institute of Public Opinion, 20% of Americans are happy. So 80% of people are unhappy. And the Bible has a plan in order to make people happy. Local and national media outlets, including the New York Times, the Star Ledger, the Bergen Record, and even major networks frequently look to Dr. Ireland for a Christian perspective on cultural and political issues. As we told sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to be quiet. And you know what? And you know what? He didn't, uh, he didn't run. He didn't judge. He said, Dr. Phil, how can we help? and you can help and you will help, correct? Certainly. Uh, Stephanie, first I want you to realize that secrecy and darkness is the basis for being trapped. And when you let the cat out the bag of your addiction, it now frees you to get healing and walk through a process to wholeness. Pastor David Ireland was spending so much time and energy taking care of his congregation, he suddenly realized he wasn't taking care of himself and it showed. So he changed his lifestyle to one of healthy eating and exercise. In 18 months, he lost 65 pounds. And Lord helped me by showing me that, number one, it's not a prayer away. It's not an easy thing. Please welcome to the 700 Club, David Ireland. David, it's great to have you here. Sarah, it's a pleasure, pleasure to be here. I like what you said about the fact that weight loss is not a prayer, just a prayer away. It's not a simple thing, it's a process, but what motivated you to do more than just desire to be thinner or, or healthier? What, desire, what motivated you to really get in there and do it? Well, I think that my epiphany was just simply saying, I need to get myself together. I got myself together academically, having earned a PhD in organizational leadership, in fact, here at Regent University. And I was also, also together by way of spiritual life, but my physical life was not together. So I wanted to bring harmony within those dimensions of my life. And when you think about building a church that's diverse to reach everybody, because God loves everybody, is that you have to think about the need to discover one another. And the way you discover one another, and the one I found out is this, I had to automatically put myself in, in the position of being a student. That means when I come into, into contact with someone who's different than myself, I have to ask myself the question, if I don't understand him or her or their ethnicity or their background or their race or their culture, I have to ask myself without drawing conclusions because sometimes we draw conclusions and conclusions are really prejudicial conclusions. With only 5% of Cuba being Christians, this nation is ripe for the gospel. Dr. Ireland locked in on the people's cry for a revival and on the Lord's desire to visit the island in a fresh and powerful manner. You've seen other shepherds celebrate. You've heard of great outpourings of the Spirit in other places. But now the Lord says it's coming to you. 
upgrade. It's coming to your house. Just like you see babies in the natural learn to walk. I'm actually standing in the lobby of the House of Parliament in Bratislava, Slovakia. Slovakia is a nation in Central Europe, right below Poland. And standing next to me is Branislav, one of the members of Parliament. I want to encourage you tonight. Your family's worth fighting for. I want to encourage you tonight. The destiny of Slovakia is worth fighting for. I want to encourage you tonight. The purposes of God needs to be fought for. You have no choice. As you can see, I fit comfortably into all those sectors. What I've learned though is not necessarily try to define myself by some specific sector. What I learn is to use my gifts to serve people. That's why my life rolls up to the singular statement, I exist to unite people to God and people to people. Thank you for watching this video.